Today we're gonna to be talking about building better buttons in React. And this all started uh, when I was working on my side project on this form here that lets you create entries. And uh, you'll see this button right here to add a set and to remove a set. Uh, and we also have this save button. And the save button is kind of the default button you get with HTML. And you'll notice if you click on it, you know, it works, but you can't really tell that you've clicked on it. There's kind of this delay. And uh, there's some other issues with kind of default buttons. If you press it and hold it long enough, you'll start selecting the text of the button, which is pretty much never what you want. And uh, finally, if you long press and start dragging, you'll scroll the page. And uh, in a lot of native platforms like iOS, you can start pressing a button, receive immediate feedback, and then even you can drag off of it uh, to cancel the button press. And so this kind of immediate feedback was the first thing that really bothered me about this form, you know, when I was using my app in the gym, and I added this animation that makes it feel just way more satisfying, way more like a native app. And it led me down this rabbit hole to basically learn how to recreate all of those features from native buttons uh, in my side project here. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And the way we're gonna do it is by looking at this clone of the iOS calculator app. So here I've got just a very simple app with the native button right here. You can see when we click on it, we get the number updating up top. And uh, you know, even in Chrome here, uh, we have this active state, which is pretty good. It gives us some feedback if we press it long enough. But even on desktop, you know, if you tap a button really quick, you can see it's updating, but, but sometimes you don't even see that focus state. And so there's a few things already we can improve in the desktop experience. Over here, I've got it running on the simulator and you can see some of the same stuff. If you tap it really quick, you kind of see this weird highlight that's from the WebKit highlight CSS property. And if I click and drag, you'll see the same problems from my side project where, you know, the text gets highlighted or if I click it long enough and start dragging, uh, instead of you know being able to cancel this button, uh, we start scrolling the page. So let's take a look at how to fix these one by one, and we're gonna start with that text selection issue. So this one's easy. Uh, we'll come down to our button component here, and we'll add a select none class from Tailwind. Now uh, I'm using Tailwind, but you'll see this really just applies the user select none CSS declaration. So you can do this using any technique you like. And you'll see over here uh, in desktop, we can't actually select the text of the buttons anymore, but more importantly, over in our simulator, if I long press these buttons, we don't see that come up anymore. So already we've improved the buttons over here on mobile. Next, let's make sure that uh, when we long press and start dragging, we can't actually scroll the window. And this is another easy one. It's the touch none class from Tailwind, which again, just sets this touch action property in CSS to none. So if we apply that, come over and check this out, we'll see, well, now we can hold the button and uh, we can't actually drag the window. But if we drag, of course, outside of it, we can still scroll just like normal. So that's a really nice addition, really easy win right there. Okay, so those are uh, the easiest ones. Next, we're gonna to have to bring in some JavaScript to improve the interactivity of our buttons. So uh, the next few problems we wanna tackle here have to do with pressing and canceling a press in both desktop uh, and on mobile. So right now uh, we have this good feedback using the active uh, pseudo class in CSS to show if our user is kind of pressing down a button. And if you let go on the button, then it registers the click handler. If you let go out here, it doesn't. And this is basically how buttons work uh, everywhere on you know, Mac OS and most native operating systems and also native mobile operating systems like iOS. If you start paying attention to how you use buttons in native apps, you'll see you probably do this a lot. You know, you think about going to tweet or send an email and then you decide uh, you don't want to, even a message, you can let go, you can drag off the screen and let go. And so we see that this works in desktop, but First of all, we're not getting any feedback when the user drags off of one of these keys. So we can't actually tell other than the cursor here uh, that we've canceled the press. And then over here in mobile, if we tried to do this, 
uh, it's the same thing. We actually have the same behavior where we can cancel it now that we are not scrolling and selecting the text, which is good, uh, but we don't really get any feedback that we've canceled it. And also uh, you'll notice if we drag off and drag back on and let go, uh, we don't get the tap behavior. Whereas in desktop, if we press, drag off and drag back on, then let go, we do. Not only is it different between uh, Chrome here on desktop and iOS, it's different between browsers, even on the same operating system. So Safari and Chrome treat this differently and different browsers, different mobile devices will treat this differently too. What's more, if we come over here to the Chrome demo, uh, we'll see we have this focus ring that we're using with the focus visible uh, CSS pseudo class to show when a button was focused via the keyboard. And this is nice because it lets keyboard users, you know, see what is selected. You can hit space or you can hit enter to actually register, you know, the on click handler for the button. But uh, if I hold down press, you'll see I can kind of wait and then let go and it registers once. But if I hold down enter, you'll see it actually is invoking this on click handler again and again. So the space bar and the enter key work differently here. And again, uh, even on the same computer and the same operating system, those two keys behave differently in different browsers. So for all of these reasons, we actually want to uh, bring in some JavaScript here via this awesome library called React Aria, which normalizes all this stuff, both in desktop and on mobile browsers and gives us a ton of cool functionality along the way. So uh, let's come back to the code and uh, go ahead and grab use button from React Aria button. So uh, you'll see that this is a hook that we just import from this library. Let's go ahead and take a look at the docs uh, just so you can feel a little bit more confident if you go to use this yourself. So this is the page for use button and let's just come down and look at the example. So the kind of basic example here wants us to create a ref, call use button passing in all of our button props and the ref. And uh, this is gonna give us these button props that we can then splat onto our actual HTML button element. And that's what wires up all the functionality. And then uh, you can just see them destructuring children right here. Uh, in our example, we already have children. So to start, let's just grab these two lines and we'll paste them in. Let's grab use ref from react, pass in a ref, and for props, we're only exposing uh, on click here. So we can just pass in on click like this. And now we'll basically replace this on click with all of our button props. So just with that change, let's come back and see what new behavior our buttons have. So uh, I can still click these and the on click works. But now we'll notice that we see our focus ring uh, even when I click with the mouse. So that's something we'll come back and fix in just a second. But the second thing we'll notice is that if I tab through these with the keyboard and try to hit space bar or enter, uh, that doesn't work anymore either. So uh, let's fix that first. And the way we're gonna do that is instead of passing in an on click to use button, we're gonna pass in an on press. And uh, we see all these kind of on press events that have been added to the button for us. These are basically the unified interface that React Aria is providing to us so that everything works as expected and consistently across different devices and different browsers. And so if we just remap our on click to on press, come back and try this out, we'll see that our spacebar and enter are working again to actually input uh, these numbers. And not only that, if I go to five, I can hold space and let go it only registers at once, but I can also hold enter and let go and it only registers at once. So we're already seeing some of the benefits and consistency that use button is bringing to our app. Now uh, we've lost our active state. So this active BG uh, class that was being applied with the active pseudo state, which we can still see when we use the mouse, uh, we lost the pseudo state and that's because there's some issues with this again, in terms of cross browser consistency. But fortunately with this really cool on press prop, we get an is pressed state variable from our use button hook that we can use to conditionally apply classes. So uh, let's turn this into an expression and we can add 
is pressed, we'll apply some class. Otherwise, we'll apply this class. And so now we can grab this part, which is applied if we're pressed, paste it in there. Otherwise, we'll apply this one right here. And let's go ahead and remove this active, just like that. So if we come back and refresh, we'll see that our clicks still work. And uh, actually, our active state works as well. So if I press with the mouse, we'll see that new background class applied. Uh, but now if I use the spacebar or the enter key, it works just the same. And again, we have that consistent behavior with enter and space. So that's great. And uh, if we pop over to our mobile simulator, we'll see that we're getting the same thing with touch. But uh, not only that, if I press and move out, look at that. We actually get uh, is pressed setting to false, even though I'm still holding down. And if I let go, again, we get the press. If I let go out here, we cancel the press. But now we have some feedback in our UI because everything is being derived from this on press handler. And uh, check this out. If I come over to my mobile simulator, we're going to see exactly the same thing. So uh, needless to say, implementing this yourself to get this to work with touch gestures in mobile Safari, on Android, and all these browsers. There's a lot of work that goes into making this library work, which is why it's so cool. It's open source, maintained, uh, really great. It's straight from Adobe. They use it in their design system, so it's a really good library uh, to rely upon. But uh, I was pretty impressed with this, with just how easy it was to get this to work on both mobile and desktop, uh, but we're not quite done yet. Okay, so now that uh, our presses are working, let's take care of this focus ring issue. So uh, we can see here that the focus ring still works with the keyboard, but that's, that's the only time we want it to show, and yet it's showing up when we press with the mouse. This is because React Aria actually uses JavaScript to programmatically focus elements, again, because of cross-browser inconsistencies. They even found that iOS sometimes blurs an element uh, some time asynchronously after you've interacted with it. And so again, here they are using JavaScript to ensure a consistent, accessible experience across all your UI interactions. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and link to this great blog post series that talks all about everything we've been talking about and even more going into depth on this hook. But needless to say, uh, if we want a super consistent experience for our users, uh, we can't quite use focus visible. As we can see, Chrome even applies the focus visible class when you focus an element with JavaScript, which is not even how all browsers behave. And so we're not going to be able to use these focus visible pseudo classes, but fortunately React Aria has our back with a component called focus ring. So if we wrap our button in focus ring, which we can import from React Aria focus, we can use the focus ring class prop to apply some classes whenever our component is focused with the keyboard. So let's grab all these focus visible classes and just put them here for now and save it. So we're going to see, uh, we no longer see those rings when we click with the mouse, but we don't actually see anything when we tab with our keyboard either. But if we were to just drop in a ring class, now we see ring we see our active state, but when we click with the mouse, we no longer see that ring. And again, this is gonna be normalized over here as well. So uh, when we tap or release or anything like that on a touch device, we won't see those focus rings either. And so now we can just grab all of these classes, which was kind of our original uh, ring treatment, and we'll just drop all these focus visibles. And now we've got kind of our offset treatment right there. That looks great. And again, we don't see it with the mouse. So this is a super handy little uh, component. It lets you apply these classes when an element receives focus. They also have a hook version too, so you can do more cool stuff in the body of your component. Okay, so this is most of the features from use button that I found handy, but there's one thing uh, that's kind of missing for me from this UI, which is what led me down this entire journey to begin with. Remember, I wanted to tap those buttons on my form and make sure even after a quick tap, the user saw some feedback. And uh, we have this nice active state on our buttons, uh, but if you tap quick, you still don't see it. 
And that's just because is pressed is flipping to false uh, too fast. So you could imagine, you know, we have 888 here. I'm tapping eight right now. Can you tell if I actually tapped it? You can't quite, this is a little contrived example, but you get the idea. You want some better feedback when you quickly tap these buttons. And so this is where Framer Motion comes in. I love using Framer Motion for animations. And if you think about it, uh, this is not really a state uh, based transition that you could use CSS transitions for. This is really uh, triggering an animation on an element. And uh, when it comes to animation, I use Framer Motion. And so what we want to do is use Framer Motion to kick off kind of a subtle background fade uh, whenever we press these buttons. And so uh, the first step is to turn our button into a motion button, which we can import from Framer Motion. And now we can animate it. Uh, whenever we press this. Now, when I first started this, uh, I was a little confused on kind of how best to achieve this because typically uh, with Framer Motion, I'm used to using, you know, like this animate prop, passing in some values like opacity one, initial opacity zero, and then, you know, that using that to trigger animations. And, you know, you can change state and these will animate accordingly. But Again, as I mentioned, this is not really a state-based animation. I mean, our button is not in like a checked state or anything like that. We really just want to trigger an animation when we press it, as soon as we press it. So it's more event-driven than it is state-driven. And uh, Framer Motion kind of gives us some APIs that are a little bit lower level than this high-level declarative API when we want to trigger animations from an event. And uh, there's this really cool hook called Use Animation that we can import from Framer Motion. And this gives us a set of controls that we can actually pass in here to animate. Just like this, animate equals controls. And uh, if we do that, we won't see any difference. But if we go ahead and make on press kind of a function, so we can write a little bit more here. And uh, let's move this uh, above. And now if we come down to on press, we can use our controls to start an animation. So uh, this takes all the same stuff that you would pass to animate or initial. So we could do something like opacity zero. And now if I click on these, look at that, they just fade out, which is not very useful, but uh, you can actually pass an array here and go from zero back to one. So if we refresh and uh, now you'll see <laughs> we get this funny fading behavior, but you get the idea we're able to now trigger an animation on click. So instead of fading the opacity, let's change the background color and we'll go ahead and animate it from kind of our active state to our inactive state right here. And now We've got this really cool looking behavior. If again, you've used calculator on iOS, uh, you'll know that this is basically exactly what they do. And this is just so much better than not having any feedback, especially when you're using the device, it feels much more satisfying uh, to use. You're much more confident that you actually press the button and uh, the thing you want to have happened is, is happening. And so uh, this is pretty awesome. But uh, if we try some of our other behaviors, we'll see we've kind of broken them. So if I press on the seven right here, nothing's happening. Uh, it's actually still working, but I'm, I'm not getting that active feedback from our is press state down here. Now, uh, if I refresh, you'll actually see that it works the first time, but as soon as we animate, I can't do it again. And uh, this is because Framer Motion works by setting inline styles here in order to trigger animations. And so these are always going to take precedence over our classes in the HTML, and that's why that's happening. Uh, another problem here is, while you can see the animation does work if I kind of click this multiple times, if I click it and then click and hold, uh, the animation's still running. Uh, but ideally, you'd want to be able to click it uh, quickly, even if you're holding. So you can see, you know, if I trigger animations with Framer Motion, every time I press, it starts this over again. But uh, if I just click and press, I can't quite get it if that animation is running. So really, we want to be able to cancel the currently running animation 
if the user taps and holds again. And so for these reasons, we want to move this is pressed logic up to frame or motion uh, using the other press events we get from use button. And this part I just think is so cool because I love seeing these two libraries work so well together. They figured out the boundaries so well and give us the ability to basically make whatever we want here. And so what we're going to start with is that active state on press start. And so you'll see here we get this on press start. Let's go ahead and make this a function. And uh, when we start a press, we want controls to actually set a color. This is another cool thing about these animation controls. Uh, you know, currently our active state, it goes immediately to that highlight color, right? It doesn't animate there. So we don't actually wanna start an animation. We want to set some properties. So we'll say the background should just be set immediately to our highlight color. And now if I click and hold, you'll see that that works great. So that's pretty easy. Uh, next, we want to be able to cancel this animation. So again, if it's fading out and I click again, you might be able to hear it. Nothing's happening. So uh, before we set this, we want to cancel any currently running animations from these controls. Well, you'll see right here that uh, controls has a stop method and we can just call that. So not only can we click fast, if I click and then hold, you'll see it highlights immediately, no problem. So that's pretty awesome. And then finally, we've lost our kind of drag behavior here. If I drag out again, uh, we can't use this logic anymore because the inline styles. So we have an on press end, which is basically corresponding to this is press state. You know, these two events are going on and off as it gets pressed or dragged out of. And so we want to go ahead and grab these controls. And uh, we just want to set the background color to kind of the inactive state right here. Give this a refresh. And now we have that behavior back. But if we let go, we see the nice animation. Now in iOS, the press end that happens when you drag is actually also an animation. So it'd be nice. If we could reproduce that, well, uh, instead of calling set, let's just call start right here. And there we can see a little bit of fade. Now the timing is a little bit different because we have two keyframes here. This is twice the length of this. And we can kind of see that. So let's go ahead and add a transition with a duration of 0.4 here and here to make these consistent and uh, check that out. Pretty cool. We've got our press behavior. If we let go, uh, we register the on click. If I drag out, nothing happens. And if I click quickly, uh, we get cancellation, whether we're just tapping really quick or we're holding this. And uh, if we come over here and look on iOS, we're gonna see we have all of this behavior carrying over, which is so cool that this again is normalized. Now, one final little thing you'll see when we just do a quick tap on iOS, uh, it, it seems like it's kind of flashing a little bit. And this is because of a CSS property called tap highlight color, which again is kind of like duct tape over the default button, just because it can be so unclear whether you're actually interacting with it. But because we've gone through all this effort, we want to make sure and uh, let the user see uh, the nice animation that we created here. So we can actually say WebKit tap highlight color is transparent. We'll just slap that as an inline style on our button. But you could imagine, you know, applying this to all buttons in your app if you made sure to take care and uh, show some feedback when they actually get tapped. But now we'll see that same nice smooth tap. We can go ahead and cancel this and we see it animating and uh, it's cancelable. Nothing is uh, being magnified. Nothing's being scrolled the page when our user has interacted with the button. And uh, this is a pretty cool solution. Now, before we wrap up, let's just do a little bit more refactoring. If we look at our code, uh, we'll notice that we're setting the uh, button to the highlight color on press start. And then we're animating it out on press end. 
And then if the user uh, actually releases the press on the button, we basically animate it from the highlight color out again. And because these are basically the same animations here and here, and on press start always happens before on press, uh, we should be able to actually remove this animation code, save this, and see the same thing. And uh, again, this is because we're setting it to the highlight. And then as soon as we let go on press end, we animate it out. Let's check this behavior. When we drag off, looks like it still works. And uh, if we use the keyboard, it's working as well. And uh, just to check this over here, we see exactly the same thing. So that's just a kind of a nice little thing we get here because the animation on press end is the same as when we actually press it. We can simplify this again back to just mapping on click to on press, but that cleans this up pretty nicely. And finally, uh, down here, where we were kind of conditionally applying these classes based on the is press state, well, we're not really using this anymore since we're using frame or motion to set the background. So we can go ahead, grab our starting color, and uh, let's just delete this. And now if we save this, we'll see kind of the initial render doesn't work because these are all you know client side events. And so we're gonna to wanna to bring in that initial background color again, just like that. This doesn't even need to be an expression anymore. We'll turn it back into a normal string. Refresh, give this a shot. Everything looks good. Over here, everything looks good. And uh, that means we don't even need this is press state. So uh, that's it for our button here. Uh, let me go ahead and show you on the actual device just because I think it's so cool how close we got to this. Uh, if you look here on the native calculator, you'll see this kind of animation treatment. And you know we can tap really fast. We can hold and drag. Now in iOS, you can actually kind of select these other buttons, but uh, we didn't do that for the purpose of this video. But you can see if you drag off of it and then drag on, uh, you get that feedback. And again, I urge you to start paying attention to how you use your device because you're going to see you do this a lot. And then when you switch over to mobile websites, uh, there's just a flakiness about them. There's some apprehension you get. Did I tap this? Did I actually click on that? And so uh, it's pretty cool what we ended up with here because if we come over to our website and give this a refresh, this is what we just built. And uh, look at that. That feels so good. I can tap on this, drag out. My browser's not scrolling. I'm not getting any magnification. And if I tap fast, I'm very confident that these buttons are getting pressed. So uh, that is what I wanted to show you. Quite a lot of work to build a really nice button, but I find uh, it's had a pretty good impact just on the user experience of my side projects. You know, this is a pretty dramatic animation that I did to just copy the iOS calculator because I think it looks cool. But using this for more kind of regular buttons in my own projects, um, you start to notice when it's not there and there's so much you can do with this, you know, because these controls let you do anything that you can do with frame of motion. So you can go crazy with this, but the basic idea is going to be the same. You're going to bring in use button, apply these props to your HTML button, use these focus utilities they give you for uh, applying focus classes. They actually also have some hover utilities, so you get better behavior uh, hovering with different devices. And then uh, when you use this kind of unified press interface, you get to have complete control over what happens. Again, even if the user taps really quick, which I just think is such a, such a good improvement, really makes your apps and sites feel more polished. So that is what I wanted to show you today. Be sure to check out the description again for the blog post, link to the documentation for use button and frame of motion. And of course, I'm gonna make all this code available for you so you can go ahead and grab this button, pull it into your app and start messing around with it on your own. But uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm actually working on a frame of motion course where I talk all about animations just like this. And uh, I'll drop a link to an email sign up so you can hear more about that in the description as well. Otherwise, uh, have any questions, ask me in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.